Okay, I've got all the oil drained out of the engine. Now I'm gonna take it apart to get a closer look at the damage in there. Now I'm gonna start by removing the recoil assembly and I'm gonna to have to take off a 3 8 bolt over here and there's one the same on the other side. And the other bolt is way down over here. Now once the two bolts are off, just pull on the whole recoil assembly. Next I'm gonna remove the nut with my impact wrench and a 15 16 socket. To get the flywheel off, I'm going to use this pneumatic jackhammer. I'm going to insert it right in the hole over here. And I'm going to keep a bit of pressure on the flywheel while I do this, but make sure you pry it where you're not going to cause any damage to the engine. So in this case, I'll just do it down here, and you don't need to put too much pressure doing this. And when you do this, just be careful because the flywheel will pop out and it can hit your hands. So make sure you're safe doing this. And it's nice when they pop off easily like this. And don't lose the small keyway there. The reason why I took the flywheel off is so that I can pull the crankshaft right out of the engine to make it easier to remove the piston and the connecting rod. At this point I'm going to remove the sump cover and I'm going to have to remove all the 3 8 bolts that hold it on. Now that all the bolts are off, I'm going to use a rubber mallet and gently tap the cover. Once you see that it's separated, just pull. The gasket may be broken, but if you do repair your engine, just put a new one. Sometimes the cover is hard to get past the crankshaft, so you may want to tap the shaft. Okay, so now I've got the cover off, next I'm going to take the camshaft off. And just a question I often get is people ask me when I put my engine back together, where are the notches that I lined up together? Well these are the notches here. You have to line up the crankshaft to the little notch on the camshaft over here. So just line up these two little dots and your engine is properly timed. Now to remove the camshaft it's fairly simple, you just pull it out. And when the push rods come out, you want to make sure that you put them back in the same location so when you take them off, just mark them. So what I did is I put a piece of tape on the intake lifter and I wrote the letter I there so I'll remember that this is for the intake. I'm just going to mark everything just in case the owner decides to rebuild the engine. Now what I'm going to do is take off the connecting rod and to do that I need to remove both bolts over here and they're 5 16 So I'm going to reach down in there with the socket and the ratchet. And take good note of all the parts here, the way the oil dipper is positioned before you take it all off. You can take pictures with your digital camera if you don't think you're going to remember. Now I'm just going to pop the bottom of the connecting rod off. Now I'm just going to move the crankshaft separate the rod from it. Now I'm just going to pull the crankshaft right out. And now I'm going to pull the piston and the rod right out. Now what I did is I put all the parts back and I made a little mark here to know that this is the side that goes toward the sump cover. Now the main issue with this engine is the cylinder that scratched like I showed you earlier. It's got some pretty deep grooves in there. So the carbon really did a mess in there. And when you look at the piston and rings, they're not that bad. Actually, I thought they would be much worse than this. Now, I've just noticed that the oil ring at the bottom here is pretty tight in the piston, so that could have been why this engine was burning a lot of oil. It's unusual to see that much carbon on an engine like this. Now, the reason why I'm considering rebuilding this engine for this guy is because we're trying to find another engine, but with the same size shaft, to fit in the fan on the leaf vacuum. Now, this shaft here is a really odd size. It's 7 8 Usually these engines come with a 3 quarter inch shaft or a 1 inch shaft and it's really hard to find another engine with a 7 8 shaft. 
And I just priced the block here in Canada. It's over $400 just for the block. That's not even counting the valves or anything else you see. It's just this part here, the cylinder, and this, just the bare bones, 400 and some dollars for that. So it's not worth spending all that money just for the block. So what I'm thinking of doing is honing out the cylinder and putting oversized rings and possibly an oversized piston as well and hope that that will do the job. Now I'm only going to do this job if the customer wants it and I am going to tell them in advance that when you rebuild an engine like that it's not always a guarantee that it's going to be as good as new. So if you're a small engine repair guy just make sure you explain this to your customer. Just tell them that it's an old engine and that it costs too much to get a block so if you want you to rebuild it, you'll do your best, but you can't guarantee it because it's still an old engine at the end of the day. But the chances are pretty good if you rebuild it properly that it's going to be a pretty good engine. So what I'm going to do is put this engine in a box and store it properly. Also these metal tanks have a tendency to rust inside, so I'm going to take out the fuel first so it doesn't go bad in there, and then I'm going to spray it with oil inside here just to prevent rust. I did replace a fuel tank like this on a rototiller this spring, and it costs a hundred and some dollars just for the fuel tank. So it's well worth trying to preserve them. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in my next video.